proposed bill, section 25, subsection 1 and 2. I think that here we are stepping on the toes of the Director of Public Prosecution. And as we all are aware, the Director of Public Prosecution is a creature of the Constitution. And no person is supposed to seek to influence the DPP in no form or fashion. And you cannot require the Director of Public Prosecution under subsection 2. After he's finished his investigation, you are directing him and telling him he shall inform the Commission and the Governor General in writing about the action taken in pursuance of the report and any other relevant evidence. I think that is wrong. The Director of Public Prosecution is a creature of the Constitution and you cannot direct him. He has no such obligation. Parliament cannot direct the DPP unless we amend the Constitution. You cannot tell the DPP he is obligated to file a report to the Governor General or to the Commission after he finishes his investigation. The other um, thing that I'm concerned about, Section 29, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition dealt with that, where in my humble opinion, I don't think that you should have any ministerial interference. The Minister should not have the report. I think the report should go straight to the Governor General. It's not that we don't trust the Minister, because in Acts this is normal that the report goes to whichever minister is regulating the act. But I think to have the politicians arm's length completely out of the picture, you should send the report directly to the Governor General, and I'm sure he can send it to the Clerk to Parliament to have a table to Parliament. Madam Speaker, I want us to look closely at this schedule. The Schedule 1 on page 17. Because this bothers me. And as I say, Madam Speaker, I am supporting the integrity in public life. I think it is very important that we pass legislation such like this. Other countries, nearly all other countries, have legislation regulating the conduct and the life of public officials who are desirous of serving in public office. But I think, in my humble opinion, this schedule is definitely too exhaustive. It is too exhaustive, and we are presuming that everybody in the country is corrupt. And that cannot be right. I thought the only people that would come up with Lester Bird, Asset, Michael, Robin, Yearwood, and Gaston Brown. I didn't know that all these civil servants here and, uh, are corrupt. And you're presuming that every single immigration officer, every single immigration officer, you are subjecting them and their families and their spouse and their children to file? This is an invasion of privacy. I think that definitely all members of both houses of, of parliament the House of Representatives and the Senate, all heads of departments, of ministries, permanent secretaries, senior ambassadors, you know, heads of, of statutory boards, yes, of corporations and deputies, they should be required. But there are some items in here on this schedule that I have a fundamental problem with. If you look at number 12, assistant secretary. An assistant secretary is probably paid under $3,000 per month. I'd be a permanent secretary and a principal assistant secretary. I don't think we should extend it to the principal assistant secretary. I think it is too wide in its scope. The schedule is too wide. You're bringing everybody into the net. You're saying everybody in Antigua is corrupt. Every single immigration officer. Look at, at item number 22. Chief immigration officer, yes. Deputy chief immigration officer, yes. But all other immigration officers. Why all other immigration officers? Are they dealing with collection of revenue? Are they them. dealing with collection of revenue? What conflict can an immigration officer have where you would require them to come and to say they have to file every single asset? You're putting them through unnecessary harassment. I think if you look at 24, I'm being constructive here. I'm saying that, that you're, you're widening the net too much. All warrant officers of the Antiguan Barber Defense Force. No, I think all commissioned officers, the head of the army, the deputy, and so forth. But you should not extend it to all warrant officers. The commission of inland revenue, all inland revenue officers. Presumption of guilt, presumption of corruption. Do you want to tell me every single clerk in inland revenue, every typist that works, one your officer, you have officers at inland revenue that are only making $1,500 a month, that they are required under this act to file a statement of their person. Do you realize, gentlemen, the seriousness is a serious piece of legislation? Why would you want to enshrine in this legislation all officers of Inland Revenue? And I think, you know, Madam Speaker, and when I was in government and the junior minister of finance, I advocated that once you're a custom officer, 
or you are working for Inland Revenue, all your revenue collection officers should be taken out of the regular civil service and be placed into a special revenue collection authority. Even if you have to come to Parliament and pass legislation, pay them well to prevent them, prevent those custom officers from going and making warrants and joining and colluding with business people to on the invoice. But you've got to pay them well. Put them on a bonus system. Give them a decent and reasonable salary. Give them proper training and give them a decent and reasonable salary where they can be dignified, where you don't encourage them to go and collude with the business people downtown and to on the invoice and to rip off the treasury. <laughs> I'm saying that I advocated, it did not happen, but you are government now, you must do it. I'm putting the proposal before the Honorable Minister of Finance. And I'm saying, I am saying, I only suggested it, I'm one man, I'm saying that I'm suggesting that it will be an excellent measure if you were to take all your custom officers, all your in revenue officers, all your treasury staff, and put them on the special revenue collection authority. Pay them a reasonable salary, decent salaries, and give them, put them on a reward bonus system. Well, you are government now. You do it. Members of boards, Madam Speaker. This is a disincentive. Now, if you tell me the chairman of statutory authority, or the chairman and deputy chairman, you won't tell me every single board? Yes, there are certain important vital boards yeah. in the country that deal, like the, like the um, financial sector, the IFSA. Yeah. That is an important board. You may have conflicts there with banking and gaming and so forth. Mm -hmm. There are serious implications when you serve on a board like that. I would, can understand that. Maybe the Antigua Public Utilities Authority Board, but not every single board, not every single committee. You are going to subject every single board member. I know the Honorable Wilmer Daniel, the member for St. Philip South, don't agree with this. Because he told me so, Madam Speaker. He do not agree with this. He don't, and he want me to come here today and to argue against it. Because he can't do it as Deputy Prime Minister. But it's outrageous. It's a disincentive for every single board member to come and file a statement of their personal financial. It's an invasion of privacy. All public officers including non-established officers receiving a salary in excess of $4,000 per month. That is too wide. That is ridiculous. Why? What is the necessity? What do you want? Every public officer in the country is corrupt? No, man. Except, that is, that except, is, except, yeah. except you all. You all are lily white. You all are clean. Lily you all are all saints over there. St. Peter and St. Michael and St. George. And we are the only corrupt ones over here. And all the civil servants, we have corrupted the whole public service. Will they turn away all public service? Send them home? Oh, man, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this paint was okay, too wide. It easy. It's too thick and it's too wide. We're painting the whole country and saying every public official, once you're serving, you have to file. It is not right. It is not right, Madam Speaker. And then you have scrutiny of their financial affairs. It's invasion of their privacy. And I want to say, Madam Speaker, what is it you're going to do? You're going to tell those custom officers, oh, those houses you have up on the hill up there, we're going to take them back from you? What are you? You're jealous of the envy, custom officers? Envy, envy, so much envy, envy that you envy, all have. Envy. So much envy that you have that you're going to say, oh, we're going to go and take back your houses? Envy. Come on. Come on. Mad yes. Madam Speaker. Envy. Madam Speaker. The other matter that I want to raise is that we need to stop imputing improper motives, Madam Speaker. We need to be more responsible and raise the level of debate in this honorable house. I heard this morning my very good friend, the member for Barbuda, and he and him are good friends. But it's not right, Madam Speaker. Right, we cannot continue in this honorable August house to continue to slander and defame members of the public without any recourse. It is not right. He made certain statements about Antigua aggregates and said they rip off the sand of $300 Sir? million. Dollars. Where is the evidence Sir? of the $300 million, Madam Speaker? Gentlemen, you can't make those statements stick to without the bill. supporting the, the, and giving the bill. The substantial evidence. The bill, sir. I'm dealing with the bill, Madam Speaker. But I'm saying that you're allowing, you're allowing members of the government, Madam Speaker, to make remarks that are imputing improper motives to us members on this side. And it is not right, Madam Speaker. And I hope, Madam Speaker, from today, 
that you will bring some decor.